Virtual attributes are something I use in nearly every Rails application because there are times I want to make changes to a user interface that don't map directly to the database. As an example, let's take this form for editing a product, and currently there are four fields here which map directly to columns in the database. You can see this by checking out the database schema. Our products table is storing the name, uh, the price of the product in cents, the release date time, and the category ID it belongs to. Now each of those four columns are mapped directly to the fields in our form you can see here. However, this doesn't always lead to the best user experience. Let's take this price for example. Even though we're storing the value in cents in the database, it would be more convenient to the user if they could enter in the dollar amount instead of having to convert to cents. We can make this conversion easily using virtual attributes. Let me show you. So instead of using this price in cents attribute on our product model, let's make a virtual attribute called price in dollars. So going into the product model, we simply need to add getter and setter methods to handle this price in dollars to cents conversion. So we need to take the price in cents, and I'll convert it to a decimal value since that's the best way to work with prices, and let's divide it by 100 to convert it to a dollar amount, and only do this if our price in cents exists. Now we just need to make a setter method for setting the price in dollars value, and that's going to set the price in cents to the dollars. Let's convert that to a decimal as well. Let's times it by 100, but only if the dollars is present. And don't forget, if you're ever changing the fields in a form, you should also change the values in the attribute accessible line, so this will be price in dollars instead of cents. Now watch that price in cents field as I reload this page, and it converts to price in dollars, and the user can enter in a dollar amount, and then update the product, and that updates the price here correctly. So that's the power of virtual attributes. With just a couple of methods tucked away in the model, we can really improve the user interface. Next, let's do the same thing for this release time field because I don't really like using menus for selecting each value in a time field. Instead, I prefer using a text field. So I'm going to change this date time select call to text field. And I also want to use a virtual attribute here so we can handle the formatting and conversion properly. So let's call this released at text. So going back to the product model, whenever we fetch the released at text attribute, I want to convert the released at time and I can use string of time for this. And I'll just do a very simple conversion here, but you can really uh, handle this conversion however you want it to display in the text field. And there we go. Now there is a chance that this release that attribute will be nil, so I'm going to toss this in through a try call so that it uh, returns nil if it's the release that attribute is nil. Now as for the setter method, this will accept the uh, time value that the user typed in as a string, and here we want to set the release that attribute and parse and convert that time string into an actual time object. So we can call time.parse to do this, passing in that time value. However, it's important to do this through time.zone so that it takes into consideration the active time zone in Rails. And I can do this only if the time is present. One more change to make is in the attribute accessible call to accept that released at text attribute. Now when I reload the page, the release time is a text field displayed in the format that I specified in the getter method. But it's not really restricted to this format. I can set uh, the attribute pretty freely. So I can say maybe March 22nd at uh, 8 a.m. And submitting that will set that release date and time to that value that I specified. Now if you want to go one step further on the string to time conversion, check out the chronic gem. This way users will be able to enter in relative values such as tomorrow or yesterday at 4 o'clock. I won't be doing this here, but it would be quite easy to add to this application. Now one issue with our current time parser is that it doesn't like it when date values go out of range. For example, if I try to set this to March 32nd and update the product, this is going to raise an invalid date argument error exception. To fix this, you might want to rescue from that argument error, and then you can set the uh, release date time to nil. Now if you're doing this, it's probably a good idea to add a validation to ensure that the release to add attribute is set. So this way, if it is misformatted, the user has a chance to correct it. So let's try this again. Changing the day value to 32 something invalid and updating the product, we now get an error validation saying it's blank because it cleared it out when it was misformatted. This isn't really the best user experience because it would be nice if it showed the old date that the user entered in so they can see the error and correct it. So this is a fundamental issue with how we're handling this virtual attribute. The time the user passes in here is lost by the time it gets to the validations. It should stick around for the best user experience. 
To fix this, I need to change the order that things are done. Instead of having a setter method with all of this logic inside of it, I'm just going to set this value to an instance variable. I'm going to do that through an attribute writer with that name, release at text. So this means that it'll be just sent, set to an instance variable, which I can uh, check in here in the reader value to see if that value is set or fall back to the actual release at date time. Now the setter logic can happen through a callback after the validations take place. So I'm just going to call after save here, and let's call it save released at text. And that will be the name of this method here, save released at text. So I need to fetch the value the user passed in through that instance variable instead of the time parameter. Now rescuing from this argument error here doesn't really feel right because I think this better fits any validation step instead of inside of a callback after validation. So I'm going to move this into a validation instead of just validating the presence here, let's call validate and then let's call it check uh, released at text. So now I just need to define this custom validation method and to save on time, I'm just going to paste this down here at the bottom. So here's how this validation works. It first checks if that uh, re released at text is present and if it is, it's going to try parsing it and seeing if that parse result is nil. If so, then it's probably misformatted and so it's going to display an error message saying it cannot be parsed. Or if the argument error is raised when it does the parsing, it's going just to say uh, that it's likely out of range. So with all of that in place, now when I try changing this to an invalid date, submitting it, it says that it is out of range, or if I just say a bad date here, then it's going to say it cannot be parsed. So I get the proper error message and the string value that the user types in is persisted on the form. Now this solution isn't nearly as clean as simple getter and setter methods, but if you need to persist invalid data, then this level of complexity might be necessary. Now I just realized there is an error in this code here. Uh, this is an after save callback, but this should really be before save callback, so that way when I set the release dat attribute, it saves it to the database. Next, I want to show you a couple of ways that virtual attributes can help with associations. Here a user is able to select a category that a product belongs to, but what if they want to create a category here in the same form? So after that collection select menu in the form, let's say or create one, and then have a text field here, and let's call this attribute new category. Now going to my product model, I need to make this virtual attribute, which this time I'm going to do through a call to attribute accessor. So that way it will automatically create getter and setter methods for me and just store this as a value in an instance variable. Now I also need to add this in this line up here so that we can set it through mass assignment. So reloading the page, there's the text field to create one. Now I just need to make a callback so that when this product is actually saved, it actually creates that given category. So I'll do this by making another before save callback. Let's call it create category. And I'll just define this method here at the bottom called create category. And here I'll just set the uh, category for this product to a category that's created. And I'll set the name to the actual new category attribute value that's passed in, but only if the new category is present. Now notice I'm assuming that this category will be valid, but if there's a possibility that it won't be valid, you might want to add a custom validation check like we did with the time. So this way this validation error will be triggered before it tries creating that new category. So let's try this out. I'll make a new category here, let's call it board games. And then when I update this product, it's going to create that category record and set that as a category for this product. So this works great, but what if I have a many to many association I wanna set through the form instead? Now I already have an association set up in the product model. You can see a product has many tags through a join model called taggings. So I have a many to many association here. And on this product page, I'm listing out the tags, but I would like a way to edit these tags through a field in the form. Well, virtual attributes can help with this too. So going to the form template, I want a new text field here. So I'm going to copy and paste this one and uh, let's make a new virtual attribute called tag names. And I also want uh, to change this label here, I'll just call it tags and let's say a uh, space uh, separated. Now the first thing I'm going to do in the product model is just add this attribute to the growing list of attribute accessibles. Uh, let's call it tag names. And so I need to make a getter and setter method for this. Uh, I can just use attribute writer here to make the setter method. So I'll just call tag names here, but I need to customize the getter method. So let's make one called tag names. So this should return either the tag names that the user sets, or if none is set, then we should use the tags that this product is associated with. 
So I'll pluck the name attributes out of that. And by the way, pluck is a new method in uh, Rails 3.2, I believe. And let's uh, join this by a space for each of the names that were returned. So now reloading the page, there's the tags field with the tags assigned to this product separated by a space. Now I want any changes to this uh, field to be picked up in a callback. So I'll make a before save callback. Let's call it save tag names. And then down here, make that save tag names method. And then in here, I'll see if the tag names are set. And if so, let's set the tags for this uh, object based on the tag names, a split by a space, and then let's map each one of these. And for each of the tag names that are returned inside of here, we want to either find or create a new tag. So let's do tag where the name matches that given name. And let's find the first one or create one with that name. Now let's try this out. I'm going to remove a tag and try adding one. And then when I submit this, it's going to create that new strategy tag record and then assign it to this product. So as you can see here, virtual attributes are quite powerful and there are many ways you can do them. Things get a little bit tricky when dealing with validations, but at least that complexity is tucked away in the model layer. Now on a similar note, if you're interested in adding auto-completion behavior to association fields, check out episodes 258 and 102. Well, that's all I have for this episode on virtual attributes. Thanks for watching.